This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. to another edition of Silent Voices. Before we get to the guests today, let's go to Legally Kidnapped for all the latest dirt and news on the child welfare industry. Take it away, Legally Kidnapped. Who is it? I'm from Child Protective Services. with Citizens for Parental Rights and Parental Rights Political Action Committee. Uh, I want to welcome you to our program. Uh, we're here today at uh, WKTV. Judith Fay is my co-host. Uh, Judith is also on the board of Citizens for Parental Rights <coughs> and we'll be starting the program with a couple <coughs> of guests, Kim Braley and Christy Johnson. So um, I would like to go to uh, interviewing our guests at this time and Kim I'd like to start with you first and could you give us a little bit of a history of what happened in your uh, encounter with Child Protective Services. Uh, our focus for Citizens for Parental Rights is especially on families who have had a, uh, a conflict with uh, Child Protective Services and you've had that. You're uh, a little bit unusual in, in the fact that you were uh, very determined to keep your children and you wound up keeping your children or at least getting them back yes. and uh, could you give us just a little bit uh, of a history of how this started and and a little bit of what happened well it went back quite a long time um, my ex-husband had made his false accusations throughout the years and just that October 20th 2006 the CPS worker came to my house. I knew nothing about her, who she was, no identification, no warrants. She barged into my home, pushing me through the door. Very aggressive woman. I uh, had my children removed that day. Um, yeah, no warning. No warning, no warrants. No. no right to get legal counsel or? Nope, and when I took my cell phone to try to make a phone call, she tried to remove that cell phone, asking me, who do you think you're calling? And I did make the statement to her that I have the right to make a phone call, which she was very I unhappy about. Yes, so, she, here, a perfect stranger came into your home. Yes. With no even, um, legal identification? Nope, never identified herself. Expected to take your children away just on the spot? Yes. Wow, that's shocking. Yeah, it was a very shocking day. Can you, you know, tell us what happened from there? Well, I had told them that they had to leave. Uh, they refused to leave. They still lingered around. They threatened me with jail that if I did not let them in the home and take pictures of this and pictures of that, 
I asked them to leave again. They refused to leave. Now, at this point, uh, we talked a little bit about this before the program, but at this point, you were home alone? Yes, the I children was. children were at school? Yes. Okay. My Go children ahead. were in school. I was home alone. I was terrified. I'm sure. You know, I had the, these women there threatening, yelling, screaming, lunging at now, was me. Was there any identification, uh, an emblem or anything in the car that they came in? No, there was not. Okay. There was nothing. Was, see how that would be very, uh, a very anxious moment there for a while. But yes. Then, uh, tell us more. The, the, you, uh, the, the children were at school and, and, and what happened from there? Well, I ended up leaving because I had an appointment. It, the appointment was to benefit my children. It was mm -hmm. for all of them. And I had told the workers, well, they say they were workers now, but they had to leave. I wanted them in their vehicles to leave. The officer who had showed up about five minutes approximate before I told them to leave because I had to leave, I also asked him to leave. Did he bring any kind of warrant or anything? No, he, he did was not. Was he dressed in uniform then? As in, as yes, a, uh, he had a county uniform okay. on. Okay. And, you know, they got in their cars, was, acted like they were going to leave, but apparently they did not. Mm -hmm. They broke into sheds that were padlocked with no trespassing signs. Mm -hmm. They entered into a travel trailer that did not belong to me that also had a lock on it and no trespassing. And they, how I found that out was they presented the pictures in court. Mm -hmm. um, they took my children from school. So they went to school because your children weren't at your home? Yes. They went to school and removed them from class? I do believe that they removed them after school was out. But they did take and remove them from school. They had a little bit of a problem with my oldest daughter, who they had actually tackled down on the sidewalk, handcuffed her, and put her into the CPS car. How old was she? She had to have been around 13, 14 years old at the time, because she is 16 now. Wow, John, this is really shocking. Yeah, so uh, how long were the children uh, away from home, uh, out of your uh, custody? They were out of my custody for 10 months. 10 months. Through that 10 months, I thought they would take and try to tell me, just give up. You'll never get them back. I but wouldn't give up. You were definitely told that? Yes, I was. And, okay. I but wasn't going to give up. Okay. I was going to fight the fight. They weren't keeping my babies. They were my children. I did nothing wrong to harm them, and I was going to prove that. Okay. And, uh... Tell us I, what, uh, what did uh, Child Protective Services and the court ask you to do uh, as conditions for the return of your children? They wanted me to take parenting classes, which a year before that I had already taken four parenting classes because that was just something I did every year. Um, they wanted me to take a budgeting class, a marriage class, or marriage counseling as they called it, there was another type of class they wanted me to take, but I can't really remember what it was. Okay. But during the process, I also took and put a nutrition class in there myself without mm -hmm. the courts knowing. Mm -hmm. no, go ahead. I took every class that I could. I even doubled it on some of them. My parenting classes, I took three classes. Mm -hmm. So uh, You also had some uh, forms that you showed us uh, before the program that... Uh, you designed yourself to keep track of uh, meetings that you had and uh, visitation time and, and other things. Uh, wh how many different forms did you have there? Well, here's just a few. Um, I'm going to say there's probably seven or eight here right now. Uh, throughout the time that I did these classes and everything, I say probably per day, I was filling out and having them fill out maybe 10 at the most, ten. and that included 10 forms. 
something for a form for each and every everything. Every time you had contact with a child protective services worker, you documented yes. it. Then, then did you have the worker sign? The, uh, yes, okay. I did. I had them put it in their own words, what we were talking about, what was said. Mm -hmm. um, visitations, the same thing. You know, how long, who was yeah. there. Of the many people that I have talked to and the stories that I've heard, there's a lot of similarity, but one similarity that's missing from your case is that you were very assertive and you documented uh, what was going on and you got signatures from the other people that were involved so that uh, at the po that point in time you both agreed on what had happened and, uh, yes, and you kept a record of that and that probably oh, yes. uh, was did a big you, help to you. Yeah, did you suspect they were not going to tell the truth? I mean, what prompted you? Well, they didn't tell the truth on a few occasions. That's why the forms that we had filled out were actually good, because they counteracted what they were saying in court. Wow. Because everything that was documented on my forms was also given to each attorney along with the court themselves. That was a very good move on your part. Now, you designed the forms yourself, and I think you said that you were, you, you had nearly completed 12th grade, but never, never gone to college. Right. All right? Okay. Well, wonderful. Uh, I mean, congratulations on your assertiveness. And uh, I'm sure that was a very long 10 months that the uh, children were away from home uh, in a uh, very emotionally uh, trying time for you. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. So did you are there, also, excuse me, ahead. John, did you also video any of your um, encounters with Child Protective Services? Well, I tried, but my video camera wouldn't work, but I did audio tape conversations. At one point, I had put a sign on my front door, be aware anyone entering these premises is subject to audio and videotaping, and you will sign my form. Yeah. Wow. And the worker asked me what that was about, and I said, because I'm going to protect myself and my family from any lies that you may tell. That certainly well, covers what we hear in court so often about how caseworkers yeah. or how people many, lie. We don't know who's lying. Just a quick lying. question, Judith, for you. Uh, about how many different court cases have you uh, observed or heard stories from? Do you have a, uh, an idea on that? Oh, um, a lot, a okay. whole lot. Okay. But one of the remarkable things about it, and when you first started the interview, is this is the first person I've met that got her children back. And um, the other people lose custody of their children. They're quickly swallowed up into the system, put in foster care, and their parental rights are terminated. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I'm not sure whether you're aware of this, uh, Kim, but uh, this is, is somewhat of a nationwide problem, and uh, I have a, a letter that our viewers can pick up from the Internet, or they can go to our website, which is www.citizensforparentalrights.org. We'll give you that again later. But this article is by Senator Nancy Schaefer. Uh, she's a senator in the Georgia General Assembly. And she has a, a lengthy article uh, based on her study and her interviews with various people. Uh, the problem, as far as we can tell, is um, somewhat promoted or prompted by some federal law, um, child protection law and so forth. And uh, so Senator Schaefer has done uh, numerous interviews and, and meetings and so forth. And some of her conclusions, uh, I'll, I'll let the readers look this up on the, or excuse me, our viewers look this up on uh, the internet and, and read this. But Nancy Schaefer, Senator Nancy, Sh Nancy Schaefer of Georgia says, I have come to the conclusion, and one of her conclusions is this, the Adoption and Safe Families Act set in motion by President Clinton offered cash bonuses to the states for every child they adopted out of foster care. In order to receive the adoption incentive bonuses, local child protection services need more children. Well, if you're going to sell something, you have to have, you've got to get it from somewhere to sell it. I mean, right. If you're looking at it from a, a business point of view. <coughs> but let me continue here. Um, in order to receive the adoption incentive bonuses, local child protection services need more children. 
they must have merchandise, that's her words, or children, that uh, sell, and you must have plenty of them so the buyer can choose. Some counties are known to give a $4,000 bonus for each child adopted and an additional $2,000 for a special needs child. Employees work to keep the federal dollars flowing. Now that is, wow. uh, I'm sure that's shocking to many of our viewers. Um, in, in, in my first year or so that I was involved with uh, Citizens for Parental Rights, I was, uh, was very perplexed about what is going on here because I heard mm -hmm. stories uh, like you're telling, uh, and many of them were worse, but there are a lot of similarities in stories. And why, uh, you know, I wondered why were child protective service workers so assertive? Uh, why is it that they seem to have a, uh, a motivation to take children? Why is it that it seemed like uh, uh, what many parents have said, it's, it's like you're guilty and proven until you prove yourself innocent? Yeah. And you're shaking your head uh, that way too, uh, Christy. And um, that's when uh, people began to direct me toward uh, the funding structure. And uh, we're looking at the funding structure, uh, trying to really get the hard, cold facts on this. But I'm just reading this from Senator Nancy Schaefer of Georgia. And uh, just, just to give our viewers a little bit of a, an insight into uh, what's been going on. So are there other ways that you feel like your v rights were violated? And, uh, you know, when I, when I say rights, um, uh, let, let me just, let me just uh, share a little bit on rights in, in uh, our, our byline is kind of a due process for families. And that word, those two words, due process, come from the 14th Amendment to the uh, U.S. Constitution. It says, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. So how is it that you, you feel that your rights were violated and uh, how is that, that you didn't get a, a fair and just uh, uh, hearing and fair and just treatment? Well, after what you read, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but they wanted me to destroy everything that we had worked and owned, worked for and owned. Um, they demanded me to get rid of my dog that I had since it was a puppy. She was so old. I mean, nothing that was harmful. Uh, you know, they tried to take away everything. They mm -hmm. wanted us to just destroy everything we had and have nothing. They actually said, put your stuff out in the middle of the yard and burn it. That, that's quite a drastic statement. Yeah. You probably didn't get that one on tape. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I made my mistake because no. there was a couple times that I didn't get things on tape that I wish I would have. Yeah. Um, can you give us an idea of about what it cost uh, your family uh, in, in lost wages and, uh, and then also a figure on about what it may cost you in attorney fees and court costs and so forth? Well, as far as the court costs and attorney fees and things like that, it cost us roughly right around $18,000, mm -hmm. you know, money we did not have. Mm -hmm. And then on top of it, we were paying $1,600 a month to the grandparents out of our pockets for the care of our children. You and were paying... We were paying the grandparents $1,600 a month. And then my husband had to miss certain days off of work, which that brought his paychecks down. Yeah, and lost wages just, are a, a very significant factor yeah, too. Yeah, there was so. many days. Um, to say right off the top of my head, I really wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. I know that it was like once or twice a week. Yeah. And uh, you said earlier that your husband would gladly have come today, but uh, he couldn't afford the time off from work, so. Yes. Yeah. He okay. is a very well, supportive well, man. Well, thank you so much for your story, and, and uh, I understand that you're uh, already familiar with uh, Christy's story and that you were friends, and uh, I'd like to go to Christy now. And, okay. Uh, could you give us just a little, uh, a quick rundown on what, uh, you know, a quick history of, of what happened in your, uh, in your situation? 
Again, this was an encounter with Child Protective Service. Yes. Right? Um, I didn't know, uh, but basically it's all, um, um, you, you had a, you were saying earlier that you had a, uh, a son uh, that was taken from you. Yes. And his name was? Matthew, Matthew? Gale Johnson. Okay. <laughs> and um, part of the uh, problem that uh, Child Protective Services mentioned and what they were confronting you about was, was uh, uh, failure to thrive in uh, low uh, weight. Mm-hmm. Another reason why he didn't gain the right was because he had the low iron deficiency. Okay. This was not it was not causing it was causing him not to gain any weight. I did find that out down the line. Mm -hmm. um, but you're saying that it was not because of your uh, no. neglect in trying to feed him. No. Now, you also mentioned earlier that you had a, somewhat of a tradition in your family where uh, grandma comes in to help mom with the new baby. And that's a tradition mom, that goes back for a couple yeah, generations. Yeah, my grandma came in and helped my to helped you to take care of your of your new baby. Yes. Okay. And it she would come then uh, frequently for several yeah. months. Your fun. baby, uh, excuse me, but your baby was very tiny. Was he yeah. premature? Or? They consider premature for being five pounds eight ounces. And he was about about this small, <laughs> and you can fit it in your hand. But mm -hmm. he was like porcelain. You don't want. I don't, he, everybody, everybody was afraid of uh, to hang on because he was so fragile. Um, yeah. I'll bet you were really happy for your mother's help, weren't you? Yes. And my friend Cam, and <laughs> she's been there a lot for me. Now, you mentioned earlier also that one of the uh, concerns that Child Protective Services had was that you had uh, arguments with Dad, and uh, that, that, that was one of their concerns. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> From time to time. It takes two yeah. people to make a baby. It should take two people to raise that child. Yes. And I feel like I was the only one raising that child by myself without the father there helping me. So you were, you were struggling to do that job as best you could. Yes, and, and I kept turning to my mom, which is my son's grandmother, and uh, I was like, Mom, what should I do here and what should I do here? I mean, I'm stuck because um, the father didn't want to do anything and he, wanted, he wants to leave. And, He's making me do all the work here, plus try to do the chores. Okay. I can't watch the kid now, and do the um, chores. You mentioned earlier uh, about a uh, child protective services said something about your home wasn't clean enough to suit you. Right. But then uh, you also mentioned that you uh, have a job. You know, would you tell our viewers what your job is? My job is the home health care providing I work through the state of Michigan for uh, cleaning people's houses for a living uh, who, who, who can't, can't do them anymore for themselves. themselves. So that was your occupation and you were doing it well enough to suit the state and collect a paycheck, but you uh, for some reason weren't, uh, weren't doing it up to the satisfaction of Child Protective Services at home. So. It seems like some very arbitrary standards. <laughs> I think that's a, a, a real uh, uh, important observation, arbitrary standards. It seems like there's a little too much judgment uh, based uh, in, in, in the uh, child, protection, child Protective Service workers' uh, authority. And uh, the consistent thing that we <coughs> have heard from people who have been defendants in neglect and abuse cases, like our guests, is, is that things seem to be very arbitrary and uh, that there's not a written standard that, uh, that they're given and, uh, you know, compared to their behavior and, uh, and hard for them to know when things are acceptable and when they're not. But, uh, so. Actually, I don't feel like the government 
putting a broad term on it, should be in our homes directing us how to take care of our children. Each parent's standards are going to be quite different mm -hmm. and each parent's personalities are different. And the, the fact that we love our children, we want to nurture them and take care of them and as a mother you want to teach them womanly things and in your case as your husband and their father teaches them from his side, you know, and that's really important too. And Christy, you know? your children were never returned to you, right? But no. you, you do know where they're at, and you, uh, at this point, are uh, believe they're in, in good care. And uh, you're, you're, again, very fortunate. Uh, so many parents are not even aware of where their children have gone, and they worry, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a major uh, heartache for them from then on. So I but find we're it remarkable. Excuse me, I find it remarkable that you can say that she is fortunate and that she knows that after her parental rights are terminated that her child is being taken care of by some others you know I just I just think that's I mean I'm really glad the child is being taken care of but the fact that what you said that she's lucky mm -hmm. that she it knows that implying that so many have no clue of where their children have gone well we're about out of time so uh, we need to wind this up I just want to say that uh, we at Citizens for Parental Rights are very concerned about uh, due process for parents, about a fair and just uh, treatment by the courts and by child protection. We're very concerned about the funding structure that, that seems to uh, feed this uh, uh, misuse of power, I guess would be a way that some would, would characterize that. I want to thank you for watching the program tonight. You can tune in next week at the same time and view another edition of Silent Voices. I want to remind everybody that we have Citizens for Parental Rights meetings right here at the studio at WKTV, 5261 Clyde Park Avenue, right here in Wyoming, Michigan. That's every third Monday from 7 to 9 p.m. Hope you can come out and join us. I also, if... Uh, you like to join a social network, you can join our network at miparentalrights.ning.com. That's miparentalrights.ning.com. If you'd like to be a guest on this program or send us an email with some comments, you can send that to us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrightsgmail.com. Once again, thank you for watching the program, and remember until next time, your voice can make the difference.